Good afternoon from the final day of the 2020 Utah State Legislative Session. I'd like to call this last episode of the Policy Corner to order. Uh, a little bit of good news. Last video, uh, you heard us talk about uh, Limited Sports Waiver not getting any funding. Uh, so uh, the good news is actually late yesterday evening we learned that it did uh, get 400000 in funding for this year. Uh, we're not really sure what that means in terms of services uh, this year, but at a minimum, it's a good start, helping get the program going. Uh, and so we're, we're happy about that, and we do appreciate anyone um, who took our advice and reached out to their senator or representative uh, about that uh, funding request and, and helped us get it through. A proposal came up and moved quickly at the end of the session. We'll probably have us uh, working through the November election, and that it, and that proposal is to uh, radically shift the way that uh, Utah education is funded, allowing uh, income tax dollars to be uh, spent on programs that benefit children and people with disabilities as well as education. I think there's, um, there's a lot of questions. Uh, so this constitutional change does pass in November. Uh, you know, we don't know when this funding can be used for disability issues, uh, nor do we know how much will actually be available. Uh, further, it's, it's not really clear what the definition of disability is uh, in this uh, change, so we don't, we're not really clear what it can be used for. Um, uh, so, as for now, it seems like this is kind of light on details. Uh, I think from our perspective, members of the disability community, uh, as well as advocates for children, should have been included in this process, uh, but it's something we're going to have to watch uh, for the rest of the year and get more details to figure out exactly what it all means. Something we'll be watching over the uh, spring and summer is a proposal that got funding at the end of the session to create a halfway house um, specifically for offenders uh, with mental illness as they transition from jail or prison back to the community. We, we mentioned the, the limited supports, but actually overall for DSPD, uh, it was a pretty good year for funding. Uh, they, they did get funding for the, the budget shortfall that happened. Uh, there was $2 million for the competitive integrated employment. Uh, they got the uh, additional needs and age out funding um, and uh, uh, transportation provider rate increase. So, so overall the funding for, for DSPD this year was actually pretty good. Uh, we do have one question about the, the waiting list and whether or not there was any new funding received. Uh, we're still trying to figure that out uh, and, and hopefully we can in the as it can be said, I think for the provider community, direct support staff received a bit, a bit of an increase, as did support coordinators, as well as, as the direct care staff at the Utah State Hospital. Similarly, we're happy to report that Representative Ellison's uh, mental health bills, uh, HB 32 and 35, uh, seem to have received nearly full funding. We have a suspicion that that has a lot to do with that you all reaching out to your legislators and saying and reminding them how important it is for uh, there to be a full continuum of uh, mental health services for folks uh, transitioning from inpatient care back into the community to make sure that they're able to do that successfully. As we mentioned last time, also the other thing, uh, we, we did see the funding for the, the quality improvement incentives for the intermediate care facilities. So, um, you know, I think that is uh, an important piece of our settlement and uh, will help folks who, who choose to remain there. Well, we uh, certainly uh, would, have, would have liked to have seen more funding for affordable housing and that funding go to the construction of more deeply affordable units. Uh, we are happy to report that affordable housing uh, did get $10 million in one-time funding to uh, support the construction of units uh, for folks at 40 to 60 percent of area median income. Uh, that's a that's a great first step, and we look forward to next year. One last bit of uh, funding. Good news, uh, and a shout out to our friend Jesse at uh, Voices for Utah Children. Uh, 12 month continuous eligibility uh, got funding, something she's been working on for 
I don't know how long, but a long time. Uh, and really what it is, it's gonna ensure that there are just fewer gaps in insurance coverage for, for children in, in the state of Utah, which is just a great thing. Uh, moving uh, away from funding and on to specific legislation, uh, two bills we talked about, HB 366 uh, from Norm Thurston and uh, HB 378 from Representative Daily Provo, JDP. Obviously, we were, we were happy to see HB 378 go through. Uh, it's, uh, it's a more broad piece of legislation uh, helping to ensure access. It asked DSPD and the Department of Human Services to study the issue and what the state can do. It would apply to both uh, private businesses and uh, uh, government entities. Uh, so just a broad piece of, of legislation to look at access uh, in our state. Uh, and then 366 from Representative Thurston um, only applies to private businesses. Um, you know, it, we have concerns that it could, uh, you know, make it harder for, for unrepresented parties uh, to, to get uh, remedies in ADA claims, uh, but it is a voluntary process, and so, uh, you know, we, we, we're concerned, but uh, it, it's better than what we've seen in previous years. Uh, one other bill, uh, HB 207, Insulin Access Amendments from uh, Representative Thurston, uh, with a special shout out to our friends uh, over at Utah Health Policy Project who worked hard on this bill, uh, particularly Courtney, Courtney Dog Bullard. Uh, this bill would actually help with access and cost uh, for insulin uh, for the folks who need it, so it, it's a really important bill. And so uh, the last bit of uh, news in the mental health arena is Down Note, uh, HB 219 from Representative Dunnigan, um, which runs counter to, I think, the trend of the session, uh, which was to, to look at and you know, expand the full continuum of care for mental health services uh, and focus specifically on uh, institutionalization as it asked the Department of Health to apply for a waiver to, to expand that um, for folks with mental illness. Um, you know, I think on, on a Disappointing note uh, that that bill actually passed both the House and the Senate unanimously with little to no uh, comment or or anything. And so, you know, as we move toward more community integration uh, in this state, that's just, um, you know, a disappointing bit of news from the session. We're also happy to report that at HB 274, dealing with the nursing delegation uh, from Representative Ward went through. Uh, this will allow the members who are trained to provide uh, more routine medical care for their family members and allow nurses to focus on uh, their skills and expertise on those who really need it. B240 from Senator Weiler. Senator Weiler also looks like it's uh, on its way. Uh, this is an important bill because it's going to um, allow uh, organizations like ours to get in to get information on uh, inmates who uh, have died in custody and uh, do a little bit of, in the, of an investigation to make sure uh, that they were getting proper medical and mental health care, and if not, to be able to use that information to uh, make recommendations and help, with, and help jails uh, improve the treatment that they uh, offer to offenders. Thanks for sticking with us for the inaugural uh, run at the Policy Corner. Keep your eye out for uh, possible additions over the summer. And uh, with that, I will take uh, one final motion for the Policy Corner. I move that we adjourn. Since that is a non-debatable motion, the Policy Corner is officially adjourned. <laughs>